the Morgan Keenan luminosity of variable stellar uh, stellar vibrations. Um, so the Hertzsprung, uh, Hertzsprung, he wondered whether there might be some difference in the spectra <laughs> in uh, the 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 it's amazing the uh, uh, the vessel the ship the ship of uh, like of the actual Marduk it's amazing uh, so yeah so Hertzsprung he wondered whether the spec the spectra of giant and main sequence stars are the same uh, uh, the same spectral stri type uh, type spectral type and the same, uh, and he found out that the variation of spectra among the stars cataloged uh, by some person named Mori. In uh, that classification scheme, there has been a line with variation uh, that they have, this person has re referred to as some characteristic, and the difference has been uh, with the luminosities, uh, and the work has been be began by Hartspring and Mori. And further developed by other astronomers, and culminated, who have done what? Culminated. Culmination in 1943 in a publication called The Atlas of Stellar Spectra. The Atlas of uh, Stars, Stellar, just like if someone wonder what Stellar is, a Stellar Spectra. Uh -huh. of, uh, by William W. Morgan, uh, who was born in 1906, and uh, he lived in 1994, and Philip Keenan, who was born in 1908. So uh, William Morgan was born uh, in, um, in, in 1906, and uh, Mr. Philip Keenan was born in 1908 uh, in the observatory in, in Jurgen. Uh, their atlas consisted of 55, 55 prints of the spectra that clearly displayed the effect of the temperature and luminosity of stellar spectra and included uh, the criteria for the classification of each spectrum. Uh, the MKK, um, which probably stands for Morgan Keenan uh, atlas, established the two-dimensional Morgan Keenan M. Uh, M uh, dash K system of the spectral classification. Okay, well, it well, the point of being that uh, that Mr. Morgan has uh, published in 1943 uh, a atlas. A, a, it is a publication. It is a, a official book uh, that that is a, a published atlas of the stellar uh, spectra spectra and oh and okay and the in the system of spectral classification and the luminosity class designed by a roman numeral as it appeared to uh, to serve some spectral type of the harvard uh, spectral type the number i subtitled in the class is reserved for the super giant super giant stars and number v uh which you know like number six that uh, stands stands for uh yeah, it's usually I don't know, and then knows the main sequence star. Yeah, we love the stars. Like stars are have are heavily associated in uh science and like science. Uh, I'm gonna get get to this point really soon of uh the the uh, uh astronomers of uh ancient Babylon. Uh, in the river of the Babylon, it's not, it's not a it's, it's not like you know, it's not a cornball song, cornball, cornball, cornball <laughs> song. Religion, manners, and customs, arts, and sciences, chapter 5, uh, 83. Uh, arts and sciences, oh, yeah. I used to have that book, uh, like the Atlas of World History, that I bought for a lot of money. That was published in 1999. I had I had the first book, but I actually threw it out. I threw it. I threw it to the trash can. Sometimes, like I, I throw out things, so I really regret it because there was like it was really written, written really greatly. Gerted withdrew the ponder lawns, exceeding the diet attire upon their heads. 
all of them pri uh, princes, princes to look to after the manner of the Babylonians of Chaladea, the land of their nativity. Ezekiel 20, uh, 23, 15. The manner of the custom of the Babylonians through their admitting of their co uh, copious illustration from the ancient monuments which were found possible in the case of Azuria uh, are yet sufficiently known to us either from the um, ext ext extreme remains from the accounts of ancient writers of authority or uh, furnished materials from a short chapter uh, Herodotus, uh, Starabo, Georgius, and then and the Demarcus, the Damascus, the whoever that was, present us with many interesting uh, traits of this somewhat singular people. Uh, the sacred writers, contemporary mm, to the acme of the nation and numbers, uh, add numerous touches, tuches, while the remains, though scantily, uh, scanty, 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 uh, put distinctly and vividly before our eyes a certain number of curious details. Herodotus described in some elaboration the costume of the Babylonians of his day. He tells us that they wore long linen gowns. Uh, they, they wore long linen gowns. That's interesting. Oh, yeah, we have Babylonians in the lower ranks presenting an offering. Oh, yeah. Uh, so uh, they wore a long linen gown reaching down to their feet, mm, a woolen gown or tunic above that, and a short cloak or cape uh, of white color, and shoes like those of the Beotians. Their hair, uh, they allowed to grow long, but mm, they had long hair. The Babylonians of of the uh, of the day they had like uh, of that time of they actually lived there, they had long hair. Oh wow, they had ponytails, but they confined it by headband or uh, a headband. Oh no, like or or a, a a turban, which is like you know like in the antiquity people, uh, like you you would find like people wearing different types of uh, head uh, hats simply uh, simply put as you know hats golden eye I'm, I'm wearing that it's, it's really it's like it's really comfortable I mean I'm, I'm, I'm in my comfort attire I'm really comfortable oh yeah one thing I'm keeping myself warm is that I have a I have a bodysuit I have bodysuit because it keeps me warm uh, so, uh, their hair, put on a red light, 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 there, put on a, uh, the, put on a <laughs> or, or light or dress. Uh, my knees are really that, uh, large. They, they look extremely large, but they're not that large. My knees are not, like, super, uh, I'm not, like, yeah, I mean, I have became uh, a muscle top, <laughs> a muscle, uh, uh, a muscle top cat. I became. But, but uh, they, my knees still, still like extremely large. I don't. I'm not sure if it's that favorable. Uh, now I'm getting back to the how the Babylonians dressed. It's fascinating. Yeah, because I have the. T uh, I've been like. Uh, talking about oh, uh, about the subject, are my legs really that fat? But you know, well, it's not like some sort of chicken leg, but I think it's beautiful. But, I mean, it's not like beautiful, but it's like it's uh, it's okay. I mean, uh, it's, uh, at least it's not fat. See, it's not fat. But I'm, I'm blessed. It's a blessing. It's a blessing uh, by um, God that. Uh, uh, that my leg is not fat, but you know, it's, it's muscular, so I, I get comfortable. Uh, they wore a headband or a tour band, and they always carried a walking stick with a craving of some sort of, uh, of some kind to handle. This portraiture is probably, is probable, applied to the richer inhabitants of the capital and represents a Babylonian gentleman 
of the fifth century before the common era or our era and he made this appearance he that gentleman made their appearance in the streets in the metropolis period the cylinders seem to show that the cylinder what cylinders that the ordinary babylonian dress was less complicated the worshiper who brings an offering to a god is frequently frequently represented uh, with a bare head and wears apparently but one garment a tunic uh, generally ornamented with a diagonal fringe oh that's beautiful that must look really beautiful a fringe uh, must look really uh, incredible um, it, exhilarating the word that i just made up and reaching from the shoulder uh, to a little above the knee oh manners and customs that's wonderful well i'll get back to this chapter because it's almost half the new uh okay but still uh mr william morgan uh mr william Mo 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 morgan uh, they uh, wrote that the author of the Atlas of Stellar Spectra, and uh, it is called the Morgan Keenan uh, because of uh, their colleague uh, Keenan, who uh, they wrote it together with. The ratio of strength of the two closely uh, spaced lines uh, is often employed uh, to place a star in a proper luminosity class. In general, the stars of the same spectral type narrow or less and usually produce the more luminous stars. The sun is a G2V star, and the uh, Betelge Betelgeuse is classified as M2IA. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, it's a classification. Sure, the classification. But they can't like, classify a star. A star is like, I have this star uh, in my kitchen that's looking out. Uh, like, it's also, it, I, I can see it in, in the gray sleep. It's like looking right at me, and I think of that star often. It's saying hi to me, and I still have a film on to that. Like, there, there is like a film, I don't know what it is, but it might be, yeah, like, what can it be? Is it actually Mercury coming up and seeing, like, coming to Earth, like, near Earth and, like, looking out my window? Or is it, or is it Yorech in the moon? The two-dimensional... Morgan Keenan classification scheme enables astronomers to locate a star's position in the Hartsfield Russell diagram based entirely on the appearance of its spectrum. Once a star's absolute magnitude, the M in italics, has been read from the vertical axis of the Hartsfield Russell diagram, the distance of the star can be calculated from its apparent magnitude, magnitudo via an equation of d equals t. Uh, t equals 10 to the power of m minus magnitude plus 5 uh, divided by 5, where d is the units of parsecs. Oh boy, that parsec is really far away. Uh, like one parsec is uh, two, uh, 200 million. Mm, uh, 8,006 astronomical units. Well, and like uh, an astronomical unit, like I, I, I used to remember that number, is uh, 1.49, uh, uh, it's a meter. But generally, an astronomical unit is like from the sun into the earth. That's an astronomical unit. So, uh, Mercury to the sun is like really uh, an, a fraction of the astronomical AU of a AU and a Venus is and then we got Earth and then that's one astronomical unit. I don't know that. Um so uh so they is an infinite part six. Like the whole universe is probably like uh not more than a dozen parsecs and it's gigantic. A parsec is like really I like this number. Uh, that method of distance determination is called the spectroscopic parallax. And uh, it is possible for many of the distances measured for stars. And battle Jews, a pulsating variable star, yeah, uh, yeah, because, uh, yes, because uh, variable stars and, you know, and Betel Jews is a variable star pulsa a pulsar, is sometimes given uh, 
an intermediate classification oh, and classified by you know like the stars you can own a star can, you can own a star and it's a stellar system but i'm more just trying to plan on i'm i i i i'm a planet girl so uh i i'm, I'm a, a planetary uh, stars you know they're, they're just giant giant nuclear reactors that emit uh warmth and uh, a lot of uh light and uh, photons and fire and warmth they're yeah i mean i'm not uh, uh under um uh, estimating their their value but, you know as a planet uh i uh uh i uh have i have a uh you unity with other uh um rigid celestial bodies but i actually found out today it's fascinating i'm really fascinated by the fact i found out that for example that the gas is giant the giant worlds the giant realms of the solar system that they have a core which is made of magnesium uh silicon and iron s-i-f-e and uh and g it's fascinating they do have a core like uh like neptune i'm not gonna grab him should i grab neptune um he has a japanese bookmark on his head and he has this like bones bracelet that i it's like kind of like my historical bones bracelet that i that i bought this i got this bones bracelet uh in 2012 because oh yeah there was this leo guy named adam and he he's a leo he, he born in august and it was like it was a plus like it was in fashion so not this it was not in fashion it was in fashion to uh uh well why did i purchase oh yeah it's cool and bones i guess well you know uh some people are into like hardcore things like, I don't know why they were bringing to that. So, uh, yeah, I actually found out, uh, in it is on page, it is on the page. It's like, oh, it's 775. I remember that page. I have the fish, like, uh, because of cancer, they love fishing. They like going and catching fish. The giant world, you know, and uh, it's wonderful because, uh, for example, that this is page 775 that, uh, uh, this even the discovery of Neptune. I'll quickly jump to uh, Neptune. William Herschel in 1738. He discovered William Herschel. It was not until eight, in 17, the 18th century, the 1781 that William Herschel, a German-born musician, the, uh, he was a musician and he lived in England. He was a German-born musician and he was an English Herschel. And made a chance discovery of Uranus. My Uranus, he's sitting on the other side of the room. Uh, by uh, considering gravitational perturba perturbations affecting the orbit of Uranus, and Mr. Couch Adams was uh, a graduate student of Cambridge University. This book, I bought this in Cambridge or Oxford, and it came, I bought it for literally a hundred uh great room pounds and it came to my mailbox and i have four i have four copies of this book it's a it, it's a it's a um, torah it's a torah of it's a it, it is uh the scripture of astrophysics and well uh, okay and you know what one of them uh, it is not like, for example, the uh, Gemara, or yeah, you know, just generally, you know, scripture is like really, really, really uh, learned uh, intellectual books. So, Mr. Couch Adams, uh, a person in Cambridge University, proposed in October of 1845 that another planet must exist even further, farther than the sun. What? the sun okay and using bode's world to guess at the distance of the unknown planet from the sun adams predicted uh adams uh couch adams 
uh, predicted its position in the heavens. Unfortunately, when he submitted his work to Sir George Airy, a uh, famous uh, Airy, Airy, the Astronomer Royal of England, Airy, A-I-R-Y, did not believe the conclusions. In June 1846, Urbane lived there year. Urbane, Urbane. Mr. Urbain Leverrier, Le a very well-respected French scientist, uh, in, independently made the same prediction, agreeing with Adam's position uh, to with one 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 uh, one degree uh, of um, longitude and latitude. Learning of the agreement between the two predictions, Airy, Sir Airy, began to search uh, for the object. However, uh, Johann Go, uh, Go Gottfried Galle of the Berlin Observatory of uh, Observatory Observatory uh, from Neptune on September twenty third, eighteen forty seven, the night after receiving a letter from Le Verrier uh, suggesting that uh, he should look for a new planet. In a very real sense, Neptune was discovered in the mathematical calculations of Adams and Leverrier. Yeah. Neptune, you were discovered. You were discovered. In um, you were discovered. So when when was that actually? Well, it was around that time. It was um, if Leverrier was born in Urbain. Leverrier was born in eighteen eleven. So it must have been like the forties of the nineteenth century. Oh, that was when Neptune was discovered. And um, Galley merely confirmed, and he confirmed their work. Okay, and missions to the Chinese planet. But it's wonderful because it turned out that, um, well, Cassini Huygens mission launched in 1997, entering Saturnian's uh, system on July 1st, uh, 2004. Uh, this dual mission is it was composed uh, of the Cassini orbiter, which was built by NASA. With the high gain antenna system provided by the Italian Space Agency, ASC, ASI, and the Huggins probe. So, like, Huggins, like, whenever you get a word about that, it's Dutch, um, which was built by the European Space Agency, uh, <clears throat> European Space Agency. Uh, at the same time of this writing, in July, Cassini uh, was exploring Saturnian system. In 2006, Cassini was ex exploring the Saturn system, well, a, a giant real system, and uh, with its uh, giant antenna uh, at the length during its full year atmosphere of Titan, the largest of the Saturn moons, uh, in January 2005. Like the Galileo, the composition of speed, atmospheric structure, and surface features. An altitude of 40 kilometers, a parachute. Oh, yeah, it's where Cassini lived there. Uh, <clears throat> composition of structure. Well, okay, but uh, what is interesting is not the function of the mass, but um, the distribution of mass inside of the, uh, of the uh, giant, uh, of the giant. Uh, planets. So, um, what uh, love you more? Yeah, I, of course I love you. I I love you. Mm, mm, I love you. Uh, uh, other information concerning the distribution. So uh, the mass is obtained by observing the motions of moons, rings, and spacecraft. Oh, that's interesting. So we uh, we will determine. Uh, the interior of you know it's it's really giant. It, it is really giant. Like those giant worlds are are really huge compared to Earth. They are very large. They're they're like probably like a hundred masses Earth masses. Uh, for uh, observing the motions of their moons, of their rings, and spacecraft orbiting around them. For a, spheri a, spheric a spherically 
a symmetric planet, all of the mass acts act gravitationally as it was located at the point of the center, but a rapidly rotating planet, uh, Saturn is like super rapidly rotating, uh, they rotate fast, uh, like around its axis. Uh, more, uh, but ra rotating planet produces a more complex gravitational interaction with the passing object. Uh, by comparing the actual motion of the spacecraft with that would be expected if the planet were spherically sy symmetric, but it becomes possible to map the mass distribution of the interior in terms of mathematical uh, uh, in the spherical shape. This is just what has been done using the Magellan spacecraft around Venus. Magellan, Magellan? Magellan spacecraft orbited Venus. Um, a such correction uh, is that, um, right, so uh, generally, uh, right, because I, it's a different version of that. It's the same for <laughs> book, but it's a different copy. I have four copies of that book. I can give it out to friends. I have so many of them. I even I probably have like oh here uh, page uh, seven eighty three. Ah, I look horrible. Or maybe I should sit like this. Or maybe uh, ooh, that still doesn't look that fabulous. There. Um. So uh, oh, well no 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 no. No, but they, I do have the moon uh, socks, and the company is called it's called Tribe, Tribe, Tribe. It's Tribe, Tribal Socks. It's definitely some important tribe. Yeah, like I do uh, uh, pay detail to 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 um, tribal matters. So, okay, so the cores of the planet of. So, so generally, all data suggests that Jupiter, uh, Jupiter, well, he's sitting there with Mars on his head. But since we're going to be talking about Jupiter and Saturn, maybe uh, it, it would be a, a, a favorable idea to uh, to hold on to them. Mars, I love Mars, I love Mars, I love him, but right now, I love him, I love Mars, I love him, no, he, he, he's my baby, I love him, like, I, I love him, like, very much, I love him, well, I really do love him, and, um, uh, so, uh, it's a matter of, of Jupiter, I mean, Jupiter is, like, He's magical in Jupiter and Saturn, which represents like for just like for 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 the reference, Aquarius. Aquarius is ruled by Uranus, who is on the other side of the Cheder Kosher, and uh, and by Jupiter. Isn't that magic? Um, Uranus, Saturn, and Jupiter is uh, he's like. Uh, I, I, I like Jupiter. He's the king of life. He's uh, uh, should I kiss him? Maybe I can kiss him. No, but he's really cool. He's like really he's really happy, and he he's like super. He's lucky, and he always like gets what he wants. And he, I, I really like him. And he's like really he makes others very happy, and everybody uh, really loves him. I have I have uh, influences of. Uh, Jupiter because uh, well, I've, uh, I have been in a relationship with Jupiter twice in my life and they were born the same day. They were both, both of them uh, were born on December 16th. So, uh, and also I have this like friend in, in, in who probably lives like, they live in like Detroit who is like born also like the beginning of December and it's like, you know, Tina Turner. And uh, Tina Turner is represented by Jupiter, and probably like um, the vocalist. Uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, yeah, well, the vocalist of uh, 
uh, yeah, uh, well, I'm just thinking of something interesting to quote of uh, uh, aristocratic parents uh, uh, says he's a poet, yeah, uh, and um, and blow yourself away. However, 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 based on the okay, so I want to say the uh, the course of the planets. Okay, now Jupiter, I, I put I put um, I I placed a uh, in his regulus. He doesn't feel it. It's like it's made out of rock. Uh, Air Force, the Space Force Command, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, it's like uh, Space Force has landed in, uh, in, uh, in Yeovil, and they, uh, like, I love him, I love his moons, like, his moons, I'm gonna get to him, I have it, like, right here, Mars, uh, would you mind stepping down for a second, so that, um, I, I can present uh, Jupiter's moons, Jupiter's moons, and Jupiter, he's very happy. I'm kissing Jupiter because I think that uh, I really like him. He's so happy. He's always like smiling. He's wonderful. So both Jupiter and uh, Saturn, Saturn is like very also like he, he's a great guy. Have then I like it. It's Eric Trump and it's Donald Trump. <laughs> Really, and, uh, mm, really, mm, and, and no, no, but it's, uh, it's all the Aquariuses of the world are governed by Saturn. You all know, isn't that, like, you know, the return of Saturn? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, but, like, the Saturn, I don't know, it's magical, you know, it has, it has, it, it has, it has, a, I, I could definitely take, F, take, not, take, like, uh, the you know it's it's uh rem the vocalist of rem they have moon they have rings and they also have like 80 81 uh known moons mm. so look this is a really short paragraph it's 21.5 the giant world page uh, 783 jupiter and saturn have good cores composed of a thick uh, sauce uh, of rock made out of magnesium, uh, silicon, and iron, and acid. Okay, so the core is not, it's not metal core, it's not a gold, it's not a platinum, it's not a, a boiling metal core. It's, 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 it's a magma of the regular metals, iron, uh, so, uh, silicon, like Silicon Valley, and magnesium, and ice. Really? So it, in, inside of the core there is ice. However, although the data suggests that, data, that dense cores, the masses of the cores are relatively poorly constrained. For example, uh, it is strongly dependent on uh, some, some formula. It, F uh, is larger or equal than 1. They recall the higher gravitational moment selectively sample the outer envelope of the planet. The planet has an envelope, the stars have envelopes. Uh, based on the available da data in numerical, numerical models, it appears that Jupiter probably has a rocky ice core. <gasps> really? So, a giant world, he has a rocky ice core? He has a core? Yeah, he has most. <laughs> Of course he has a core. He emits a really daunting large magnetic sphere. Jupiter, like if you get close to him in your spacecraft, his uh, magnetic sphere is so strong. Like he, this is the giant, giant red spot. And uh, he like really like sucks you in into his spin with his, his really strong magnetic force. Uh, so uh, their rock icy core is less than, than about 10 masses of Earth, while Saturn's core may be about 15 masses of Earth. Earth is like the symbol of uh, a circle uh, with a plus sign inside of it. That's the masses of Earth. So 15 M uh, in a subscript of, it's not a subscript. It, it's like, you don't write it in subscript. You write it in the mathematical formula. With an uncertainty of perhaps a minute. Okay, so uh, Saturn's and Jupiter's cores are 
15 times and 15 and 10 times larger than the mass of Earth. Mm, so, all right, with an okay, and it is possible that the smaller core in Jupiter uh, could be due to the some, some portion of the core having eroded over the age of the planet. Despite the core masses of Jupiter and Saturn being much greater than the mass of Earth, they constitute only a small fraction of the total mass of each planet. But, of course, if we assume that core masses of uh, 15 and 10 uh, Earth masses for Jupiter and Saturn, Saturn and Jupiter respectively, the cores represent uh, 3 and 16 percent of the masses of the two giants. Hydrogen and helium make up for most uh, of the rest of the mass of each uh, case. Uh, similar studies of Uranus and Neptune result in uh, core masses uh, comparable to those of Jupiter and Saturn, roughly 13 uh, Earth masses or so. However, in, in the cases of Uranus and Neptune, the Neptune, uh, my name is Neptune and I'm a giant, uh, I, I'm a blue I see giant, I am the bluest planet of them all. My name is Neptune and I'm the farthest planet from the sun. I'm named after Roman god of sea and it's, the, it's not water that makes me so blue but it's the methane in my atmosphere because I am so far away you can't see me with the naked eye. Well, so who was that thing, that, that friend that looking out of my window for that? Because I'm so far away, you can't see me with the naked eye. I was the first planet found through mathematical prediction. Yep, that was just what I just read. Uh, rather than direct observation. My most defining characteristic is the active storm. Mm, yeah, I know, the active storm, I know. Um... Characteristic uh, to the to Jupiter's red giant red spot, surrounded by white um, cirrus clouds of uh, frozen methane. I have wind stronger than any other of other any planet. My winds are so, like my my winds. Uh, uh, my I I have like oh yeah, Neptune. You have like you're wonderful. You have those methane. Uh, storms and uh, you're 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 so uh, uh, divine and, and, and all around uh, exuberant. I have wind stronger than any of the planets, as high as uh, one thousand three hundred miles per hour. Oh, I, I, yeah, I love I love you, Neptune. I love, uh, yeah, I like spending time around you, uh, around, around your, uh, ambience, your atmosphere. Um, the clouds of the top layer are composed of ammonia. So, yeah, we're, we're, go we're getting to the atmospheres of the giant world. Um, so, the giants, uh, are where helium becomes insoluble in hydrogen. No, this is super, this is super interesting. Look, look, look it's a very short paragraph, but it's super uh, this is very similar uh, to the behavior of metal. The hydrogen inside the planet makes the characteristics of a molten metal, such like mercury at room temperature. This exotic equation of state of the hydrogen has been verified in terrestrial laboratories by creating shock waves in the gas that produce temperatures of several thousand Kelvin um, and uh, pressures of millions of atmospheres. It appears that liquid metallic hydrogen actually dominates the interiors of Jupiter and Saturn. Uh, so, uh, liquid metallic hydrogen. Uh, it, it's inside, it is like found abundantly in the interiors. Wow! So, like, oh wow. Like, it is in the interior of uh, Jupiter and, um, uh, what the hell? Oh, something. Yeah. Um, uh, so, uh, so liquid uh, hydrogen, uh, metallic hydrogen, 
is dominates inside of the core of Jupiter. For Uranus and Neptune, and Neptune, uh, the pressures probably do not get large enough to convert hydrogen into its liquid metallic form, but its ices present its atmosphere, such as methane and ammonia, because uh, be become ionized by the pressure. The interior structure of the giant planets uh, are shown in Figure Twenty One Point Six. Uh, from the right, not that impressive. Okay, compared to that book, uh, the regions labeled in homogeneous, homo, homo, homogeneous for the uh, giant gas giants uh, um, are where helium becomes insoluble in hydrogen and helium rich droplets form. Uh, these droplets then sink deeper into the planet, releasing gravitational uh, potential energy. Oh, that's fascinating. In the case of Saturn, the helium may have settled into the core and formed a shell around the core. Uranus and Neptune have very little hydrogen and helium and are dominated by icy, ice, ices and rocks. Well, even the rings are made out of ice and rock. The upper atmosphere. In their upper atmospheres, uh, the very colorful and dynamic cloud tops of Jupiter are more muted uh, hues of Saturn. Like, for example, in Jupiter, you get like fascinating auroras um, and like northern lights and southern lights. Uh, Aurora Borealis and the Aurora, like the, the, the southern, um, northern Saturn, middle uh, Ecuador. Um, and the deep blue, like the, the, the caps, the icy caps. And the deep blue greens of Uranus and Neptune owe their beauty and their temperature composition, rotation, and internal structures of the planets. Observational data, uh, we're talking about Jupiter, we're, right now we're, we're talking about the blue uh, wheels, uh, they are so fascinating, because you, you get the warm color realms, and, the, and then you get uh, the, uh, uh, the the blues and uh, the turquoises, they, they barely, it's not called green, it's called, uh, it, it's called turquoise. So, I'm, I'm reaching out for number one. I'm reaching for uh, Uranus. I love his skirt. He's really cute. He has like this uh, halogen hologram. Skirt uh, there are two, there are two, uh, two, uh, I, I don't have a favorite. I love all of them. I love exoplanets. I, I love all of them. And the upper atmosphere. So, uh, Uranus and Neptune, oh, they're beauty. Yeah, they're beautiful. Mm, they're beautiful. Mm, mm. Uh, to the temp uh, to the temperature composition rotation and internal structures of them observational data combined combined com com da data data combined with the theoretical modeling suggests that Jupiter's clouds Jupiter exist in three layers clouds in top layer are composed of ammonia and next layer is probably composed of ammonium hydrosulfide and the clouds of the deepest layer are made of water. Uh, coloration of the clouds of both Jupiter and Saturn it co is caused by the atmospheric compositions, although which color associated with the molecules remains unclear. Suggestions include sulfur, phosphorus, and various organic carbon-rich compounds. In Jupiter and Saturn, the bluish regions apparently have higher temperatures indicating that they lie deeper in the atmosphere at progressively higher altitudes uh, of brown white and red clouds yeah yeah jupiter is white red blue and like it's brown red white uh, yellowish and uh, gold not gold it's not as gold yeah but they're like you know, orange i love them I love them. They're like they're giant red spot. Like it's like red lipstick. That's where red lipstick. Uh, Mika comes from. Like Mika. I'm not talking about the colors in Mika. Overall, uh, the clouds what? 
Uh, overall, the clouds are located deeper in the atmosphere of Saturn uh, when compared with Jupiter, and hands are not as dramatic. In Uranus, in, in Uranus, in Uranus, in Neptune, reflected clouds uh, of ammonia and sulfur are located deep in the atmosphere. As sunlight passes through the atmosphere, the blue wavelengths are scattered most efficiently by the molecules. In addition, the presence of methane as the atmosphere tends to absorb the red light. Put on the red light, put on the red light. The comet and Shoemaker levy night impacts on Jupiter. Okay, that's like the, the Shoemaker uh, impacts. Atmospheric dynamics, the great red spot, great dark spot. Well, okay, this is interesting. Uh, this, everything is interesting. Despite the apparently long-lived features, uh, the atmospheric and very dynamic, which ra with rapid changes occurring on small scales, in uh, including rotation around the more stable cyclonic structures, it is worth noting, well, however, that large features are not necessarily permanent either. For, either. For example, when Voyager 2 uh, when, when, when Voyager uh, visited Neptune in 1989, it discovered the great dark uh, spot. Yeah, it, it's in his eye, the, the, uh, the gr great dark spot in, uh, in, in mm, Neptune. In, in, in Neptune. Mm. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, so Voyager discovered that Voyager two discovered that in eighteen in nineteen eighty nine, in the southern hemisphere. Uh, later, when the planet was observed again by the Hubble telescope, oh, not the Weber uh, Weber in nineteen ninety four, the great dark spot was gone. Then in nineteen ninety five, another dark spot uh, appeared in the northern hemisphere. So uh, the northern hemisphere here, that's the g g giant dark blue spot. Uh, just as a Corollis force, the Corollis force, uh, resurrects the large scale circulation of Earth's atmosphere from north, uh, from north south to predominantly east uh, west flow patterns in its hemisphere. Cavely uh, circulation is the more rapidly rotating giant planets, particularly Jupiter and Saturn. Uh, is similarly redirected. However, the atmospheric circulation of Uranus and has an interesting aspect not shared with another giant planet. Unlike any other planets in the solar system, except Pluto, Uranus is almost lying on its side. Oh, well, it is. Yeah, you know, they're 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 like similar to Venus. They they're they're uh they they're not like uh, straight in their axis. They're like rotated like that. Well, my 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 mind rotated like that. And uh, ninety-seven point uh, nine degrees uh, to its ecliptic. However, the atmospheric circulation uh, aspect uh, is uh, not shared with any other giant planets. For except for Pluto, Uranus is almost lying entirely on its side. It is. And its rotation axis is tilted 97 point period 9 uh, degrees to its ecliptic. Uh, this implies that each pole has the sun overhead for its portion of its 84 year orbits. Neptune, uh, no, Uran, Uran. Uh, my name is Uran, and I am the greenest. I am the most. Uh, uh, turquoise planet of them all, my orbital trip around the sun, and uh, takes 84 years, and I'm, I think, uh, I think that he's the most beautiful, because it's my, he has my favorite color. My name is Yuran, I have a diameter of 31,000 miles, and, uh, my orbital period is indeed 84 years. I'm the seventh planet from the sun. I'm named after the great god of the heavens. Right. Uran. Uh, Uran is like from uh, the god of the heavens. Uh, a thick cloud cover of methane gas 
which absorbs red and reflects blue. It, wait, so it, he absorbs red and he reflects blue. Uh, gives me my teal tint. So this color is not turquoise, it's teal. The flimmery is turquoise. Um, I have rings and over 27 moons. I know it, the, the language of, of William Shakespeare. Uh, William Shakespeare, uh, name, uh, who was governed by Venus, has gave uh, Uran his uh, his names of his moons. I, I'm going to get that. I love I love the world and the realm of Neptune, and Neptune yes Neptune and and the god of the heavens. My most unique feature is that my axis it's uh, is tilted ninety seven point nine degrees. It says here ninety eight degrees, but it's a ninety seven uh, period nine uh, degrees. So I rotate on my side. So uh, I, I I rotate on my side around uh, around Mr. Uh, Helios. So I I rotate on my side, rolling around the sun like a ball, not spinning like uh, like a top like a top like all the other planets. No, but Venus is also uh, Venus. No, but Venus is not lying on her side. They are still on his or her side. Whatever, like um, the on Venus's side, they are uh, just they're rotating like the other way around. Like uh, all the planets rotate this way around, and Venus rotates the other one around. Um, yep, uh, isn't that fascinating? And uh, so I'm not spinning like the top like other planets because uh, I'm rolling around the sun like a ball. It is believed that in the early stages of my formation, an Earth-sized object crashed into me. But he's a he's a gaseous giant, uh, knocking me over on my side. Or oh, or an Earth-sized object, he knocked you down on your side, and you're rolling around on your side. Uh, honey, yeah, but you know uh, the universe loves you and he and, and he loves you and this is the universe <laughs> yeah it's just like it's so cute um so the giant dark spot of neptune was discovered in uh another one was discovered it was discovered in uh by voyager in, in 1989 and also uh in the center but also the Hubble telescope uh, discovered one in 1994 and another one in 1995. Yeah, but when the coil is forced, now how Uranus was able to transport uh, heat away from the sub-solar pole without detectable pole-to-pole -pole, uh, flow patterns remains an open question. Another noticeable difference between Uranus and the rest of the giant world is its lack of prominent vortexes. It doesn't have a vortex? Oh, I thought the, the uh, interstellar medium had a vortex. This may correspond to the lack of uh, any detectable heat flow outward from the deep interior. Although it is certainly, mo it must certainly exist, the rate of the heat flow is certainly much less pronounced than in other, uh, in other three giants. Magnetic field. See, the multi iron and nickel core of Cerberus is, uh, is the source of its magnetic field. So the core of Earth is a molten iron nickel area, and the, uh, in the giant planets, it is the liquid metallic hydrogen that appears to fill that role, at least in Jupiter and Saturn. Rapid rotation uh, generates electric currents in the uh, conducting interiors of the planet. Because of the magnetic fields are almost certainly uh, anchored deep in their interiors, measuring the rotation periods in the fields provides a method of determining the rotation periods of their interiors. In the 50s of the 20th century, measurements of the radio wavelength or the radiation being emitted from Jupiter uh, revealed both thermal and non-thermal components. The thermal radiation from Jupiter is just a part of the energy being given off uh, by the planet itself. Um, uh, the planet itself uh, 
uh, the black body radiation. It's called so. It is a terminal radiation, just a part of the energy being given off by the planet itself. So it's called a, it is called a black body radiation. However, the strong non-thermal component was determined by a synchrotron radiation with wavelength in the decameter tens of meters and the decimeter tens of meters ranges. This implies that Jupiter must have a significant magnetic field with the relativistic electrons trapped inside of it. Uh, the Jupiter. The measure strength in the field is some uh, 19,000 times greater than the Earth's field. Another interesting uh, consequence of the uh, collisions of Jupiter's southern hemisphere, which all occurred at nearly the same latitude, uh, was the appearance of an auroral display in the northern hemisphere, not unlike the aurora uh, seen on Earth, a recall in February 2015. Apparently, uh, charged particles near the collision uh, sites acquired sufficient kinetic energy that they traveled along Jupiter's magnetic field lines, colliding with the atmospheric of the north with 45 minutes following the impact. Mm. And then we get to the moons. Okay, so the physical extent of Jupiter's magnetic field is enormous. It is enormous. It is huge. Uh, it is gigantic. The planet's magnetosphere uh, this defined to be the space en enveloped by its magnetic field has a diameter of um, three point uh, three times uh, ten to the tenth power um, mass uh, two hundred two hundred twenty times the size of the planet. Uh, the magnetosphere is two hundred ten times the size of the planet and twenty two times larger than the sun. Because of, that's gigantic. It's I knew it. Like we knew it. The magnetosphere of Jupiter is so strong that he literally like he uh the the virus and sucks you in and and and, and uh seizes you, seizes, seizes, seizes. Like he's really strong because of Jupiter's rapid rotation. And he also uh, yeah he rotates like he rotates like really fast. He's a fight has the fastest rotation. Rotational period is nine hours. It's not twenty four hours. He rotates like crazy fast. Jupiter, he's really he he's very fast. Uh, and he he's wonderful. Uh, I, I love him. Uh, yes, and because of Jupiter's rapid because of his nine hour rotation, rapid rotation, the charged particles trapped in its in his field are spread out into the current sheet that is situated along the field's equator. equator. The field axis is inclined 9.5 degrees to the rotation axis of the planet. Okay, so the field axis is inclined 9, 9, 9 degrees to the rotation to the rotation axis of, of Jupiter. Given the large uh, numbers of particles present in Jupiter's current sheet, another source of charged particles beyond those supplied by the solar when it must exist. The solution to this mystery came when Voyager spacecraft first observed Jup Jupiter's moons Leo. Uh, we're going to uh, Leo. Uh, Leo, yes, I mean Jupiter. Jupiter, like, are, uh, I'm currently, like, fascinated by, by, the, by um, Neptune and Uranus. Eons inclination with Jupiter's magnetic field. The ring of the moon is Ganymede, Callisto. Uh, Callisto apparently cooled and uh, solidified quite rapidly after the material uh, accreted out of the local uh, subnebula around Jupiter. Oh, there was a subnebula. Uh, as a result, its surface continued to collect dust at, as the nebula thinned, uh, blackening the moon with uh, the dark material. Evidence that Callisto solidified quickly is also apparent with the structure of its interior. Models suggest that the interior of the moon is relatively simple, uh, with a partially differentiated interior of ice and rock and ice-rich crust, and the uh, lowest density of the Galilean moons, um, having solidified in the early stages of the formation of the solar system, Callisto was most subject uh, to frequent impacts of the still abundant objects that traveled among the newly formed planets and its moons. And moons. Evidence of the nebular dust accretion and the impacts remains today. Uh, the 
whitish appearing impact craters are the result of ice being exposed uh, exposed during the collision. Yeah. Uh, the smaller moons of Jupiter. Yeah, I guess smaller moons. Uh, Saturn, Titan, uh, Titan, T Titan, Mimas, Ar Aerosols. Yeah, uh, it consists of nitrogen, methane, uh, CH4, nitrogen, uh, and two, um, hydrogen, uh, hydrogen cyanide, carbon dioxide, CO2. Uh, mm, uh, monoxide, CO, ethane, C2H6, ethylene, uh, there's a propane, um, methylethylethylethylene, C3H4, oh, they don't, they're, they're, they're not toxic or anything. Uh, Mimas and Herschel Crater. Another member of the Saturnian member, Mimas, is a small but fascinating moon shown in, uh, the figure 21. Uh, it exudes a very large impact crater, uh, referred to as uh, Herschel. Huh. Herschel discovered this giant well. The Herschel, uh, the Herschel, uh, yep, he, he was a, a musician of German origin living in the United Kingdom. That is a testimony of a collider. It was not in the United Kingdom back then yet. It was not un, uh, United. It was not United. It was probably England, Wales, uh, and Cornwall, um, Scotland. Uh, in Northern Ireland, that is testimony to a collision almost uh, energetic enough to fracture it. Oh no! Uh, of course, Saturn. It, they should make uh, the celestial, uh, uh, celestial uh, toys. But they should make the moon. Uh, they're fascinating. The core Saturn also has numerous other regular and regular satellites of the system. A few of which will be mentioned in the context of the existing ring system in the intersection 21 century. The chaotic surface of Miranda. Miranda. Yeah, Miranda. Like us, like lawyers, us lawyers, we love Miranda. Like the first thing we have to mention is Miranda. Time to stand. Oh, 601. I still have time. When Voyager 2 reached Uranus in 1986, it encountered another moon that may have suffered a very energetic collision. Miranda, which measures only 400, 400 kilometers across, looks like a moon put together by a comedy. Uh, one explanation for its amazing topography is that one or more collisions actually succeeded in breaking the moon apart. When gravity pulled all of its pieces back together, they didn't quite fit. Uh, portions of the rock core that uh, tried to settle back to the center of the moon, while ice tried to float back to the surface. This uh, proposed uh, rearrangement of the structure of Miranda produced a, a strange uh, surface with uh, cliffs as tall as 20 kilometers. Twice as high as Mount Everest, so it's almost like Olympus Mons. And a feature similar, uh, well, Olympus Mons is like 11,000, I think, kilometers. Uh, yeah, like uh, if Mount Everest is 10 kilometers, uh, it could be like uh, more, like probably like over 20. Like Olympus Mons is the highest mountain formation in Mars, uh, in the solar system, and it's located in Mars. And me, I have the tallest mountain, it actually says. He said, like, it, it is, uh, he is proud of it, the yellow ring and the moon ring. This is a moon ring. Uh, the sun, see, it has, uh, I'm, I'm after the god of war because, like, I call it as a web and I remin reminiscence about it. But don't worry, I am peace-loving, a friendly Martian. I'm a friendly Martian. I'm rusty. In my rocks, I'm rusty. I have poor ice caps frozen all year round. I am named after the Roman god of war because my red color is reminiscent of blood. But don't worry, I am peace loving and a friendly Marsh. I know, I love, I love, I love, I love Mars. Mm -hmm. I, 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 he, he, he's like, oh, he's, you know, he's going to be soon after Earth, and he's like also resembles Mercury quite, quite, uh, quite, and he's like, it's so, like, so solar colored. 
He's very solar and he's just beautiful. I, I love Mars. I love, I, I love everyone. The structure of Saturn's rings. So planetary rings. Uh, we, we're still the time on the moon. Uh, it has rings. Uh, NK gap, Cassini division. That's in uh, the ring system of Saturn. It's a composition. Most of the particles that make the rings are quite small, which are majority have diameters that, that range from a few centimeters to several meters. Although it seems like you know, it's a little off. Uh, likely it's like dust. Likely that uh, at least some particles with diameters as small as few micrometers uh, <sighs> Forgive me Why don't you forgive me? Or as large as one kilometer may exist in the system. Scientists may derive from um, several pieces of evidence including the rate at which Particles cool off in the Saturn's shadow, and how effectively they reflect radar signals of various wavelengths. Oh, okay, that's you know, D ring, C ring, B ring, Cassini division, A ring, Roche ornament, F ring, G ring, E ring. Jupiter's uh, tenuous ring system. The rings of Uranus. Yeah, yeah, the rings of Uranus. Uh, the rings of Uranus and Neptune uh, were first uh, detected indirectly from Earth and later photographed by Voyager 2. On March 10, ha, on March 10, uh, whoa, on March 10, that, that is a holiday. Like, it calls for uh, celebrating that day. Uh, I have uh, several calendars in my household currently for the upcoming year, but we know that March 10th is the day of the man. It's, it, it's the man's day. March 10th is a global holiday of wonders, and uh, it is like the most wonder, like you can see historical figures, figures of, of mankind and of aliens who have uh, been, uh, who celebrate uh, um, uh, their Yom Huledet Sameach on March the 10th and I mean March the 10th I was probably like well I, I was like really in love because I have this like boyfriend and I was reading a book The Blue Castle which is like the same type of book as Daddy Long Legs in a bathtub or um the secret castle or um generally a book for like young girls like young ladies not ladies like not yet ladies and um uh girls maybe not yet ladies who are like dreaming of finding it was called uh which means a secret guardian a guardian you need a guardian uh uh, you need a I don't need a guardian. A guardian, a guardian, uh, a guard. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So, 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 you know, a guardian. Uh, yeah, like everyone needs, like, I, I like, uh, guardians are, I love guardians. They're like angels. I like, I love guardians. Uh, they're, they're wonderful. Like, if I, I, if I was in a different world, in a different situation, a different person, in a different reincarnation, I would probably also be guarding someone. I'm not really guarding anyone because I'm 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 a uh, a uh, uh, singularity. I'm a singularity. So Neptune's rings. Uh, okay, so Voyager two uh, found the rings orbiting the planet Neptune. Neptune, yeah, 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 yeah. because it was uh, on March that in March 10, nineteen seventy seven, astronomers were observing the uh, occultation of the background star Uranus passing in front of the star. So Uranus was passing in front of a star, and. Um, uh, and uh, astronomers uh, so found that occ occultation and Uranus was passing in front of the stars. They were trying to measure the diameter of Uranus as well as to gather uh, some information about its atmosphere. It was in March 10, 1977. 
Normally, by it's ruled by uh, Neptune, uh, and uh, yes. Uh, knowing the speed of the planet and the amount of time the star was about its atmosphere, knowing the speed of the planet and the amount of time the star was hidden, they could because it was hidden be, behind a star. Mm. Yeah, that that was that it was behind that star hidden. They could determine the planet's diameter quite unexpectedly. The star had faded and brightened several times before actually being occulted, occulted by the planet. When the star reappeared, a star, the pattern of alternating, fading, the brightening uh, was repeated, but in a reverse order. The astronomers realized that rings were blocking out the st star's light. The same procedure was used for Neptune, but led to confusing results. In some cases, the starlight was blocked uh, on only one side of the planet, leading to a suggestion that only uh, incomplete rings or arcs exist around Neptune. Oh no, like, well, yeah, well, Neptune's uh, ring systems are, they're rather faint. They're not like super giant. Uh, they're not like super, uh, like, super uh, visible, super like, uh, imp impressive, like super, I, uh, visible like in, uh, in, in Saturn. I'm keeping the tab because <laughs> he says it's just it's so cool. It's um, good times I wear. And it, it's not just your ordinary uh, ring uh, glasses. It, it has the symbol of the uh, dollar uh, currency on it. It has a dollar bill on it. It should be a shekel. I'm so happy. I'm going to be, uh, obtain a scholarship because a guy, uh, Frederick Rubens, uh, from 972, called me today on the telephone. He called me and he's like, "Hi, Miriam. Uh, would you like? Uh, you, you know, you gotta love it in Israel. Uh, you should come over if, if you are a trustee of Cardozo. If you have a." Mm, a folder of Cardozo Law School in on 12th Street in uh, Greenwich in Greenwich Village. Cardozo Law Benjamin Cardozo School of Law, Yeshiva University, Jacob Burns Institute for Advanced Legal Studies, Brooksville Center, uh, 55 Fifth Avenue. It's on Fifth Avenue. Well, yeah, it's near. It's near uh, uh, Union Square. It's like New Union Square. You walk out of Cardozo on Fifth Avenue, and there's uh, there's uh, Union Square right there. Uh, so uh, look, Neptune's rings, uh, collisions, Keplerian shear, Shepard moon, moons, orbital resonances, uh, resonances. So. Um, and knowing that the speed of the planet and the amount of time that the star uh, occulted, the astronomers realized that rings were blocking the star's light. And a total of 13 rings, yep, yeah, it has 13 rings, have been detected around Uranus. And nine of the ground, two more by Voyager 2 uh, in 1986, and another two by Hubble Space Telescope in 2004. All of the rings are remarkably narrow, ranging in the wide front width from 10 kilometers to 100 kilometers, not unlike the F ring of Saturn, which some of the rings also showing signs of being uh, braided. Yeah, some of the rings are braided. The two detecting using the detected using um, Hubble Space Telescope have diameters that are much greater than the other 11 rings, leading some researchers to refer to them as second Uranian ring system. The composition of the Uranian, Uranian ring appears to be very different from those of either Jupiter or Saturn, reflecting about only 1% of the in, uh, incident sunlight. The ring material is extremely dark. This is because the rings are composed largely of dust rather than ice, which are made out of uh, space dust. Curiously, as mentioned in the previous section, the rings and moons of Uranus 
lie in the planet's equ uh, equatorial plane and are uh, not along the ecliptic. Recalling uh, that the rotation axis of Uranus is tilted 97 uh, period 9 degrees with respect to the ecliptic, this implies that the orientation of the orbits of the rings and moons changed from one or more uh, catastrophic impacts it dramatically shifted Uranus's axis if indeed impacts were responsible for that. Uh, apparently, Uranus uh, rotationally produced equatorial bulge, it gravitationally affected its satellites and ring material, ultimately reorientating their orbits until the moons and rings were once again aligned with the planet's equator. Similarly, Saturn's rings are also aligned with its equator, despite the planet's equatorial plane being tilted almost 27 degrees to its orbital plane. Neptune's ring. When it reached Neptune, Voyager, um, so uh, when, uh, when, uh, Voyager, uh, when he reached Neptune, uh, he found rings orbiting the planet like like the rings of Uranus. Uranus, come forward, Uranus. Um, like the rings of Uran, several of the six identified rings are quite narrow, uh, while the others appear to diffuse sheets of dust. Oddly, the outermost ring, known as the Adams ring, the Adams ring, uh, along with the Le Verrier and Gala rings, are named after the mathematical observational discoveries of Neptune. Uh, um, Le Verrier, uh, Urbain Le Verrier, and Adams um, have five discrete regions of uh, concentrated material, like uh, like uh, sausages on a string. What sausages? I, I don't eat sausage. It was uh, it was these uh, concentrations that were responsible for arcs that were deduced from occultations. Physical properties affecting ring systems. Mm. So Voyager, Galileo, and Cassini called Sherpa rings. Uh, special density wave. Peter Goldreich and Scott. Uh, Tremaine in the late 70s have set up moons and consequent a real renaissance. Uh, uh, gravitational perturbations can cause particles of different orbital radii to bunch up eventually, increasing the gravitational influence on other nearby particles in their disk. Um, Cassini diffusion, yeah, yeah, yeah. the pulsing erosion effect, plasma drag, and the consequence of the uh collision next page 807 it's suggested reading it's in it's end of this chapter it's end of chapter 21 yeah plasma drag in the consequence of the collisions of ring particles with charged particles trapped in the planet's magnetic field uh plasma drag is a consequence of uh, of the charged particles being trapped in the plasma's magnetic field so on the plasma, uh, magnetic field the particles of plasma are trapped in the air and it creates a plasma drag. Since the magnetic field is anchored inside the planet, it must revolve in the rotation period of the planet. If the ring particles are inside the planet's uh, synchronous, synchronous orbit, as uh, most of the rings are, the, the top orbit, the particles will overtake the magnetic field plasma and collisions will slow the particles down. The particles will then spiral in towards the planet just as the pointing effect. Uh, that effect is a consequence of the headlight effect discussed in uh, some example and causes ring particles to spiral in towards the planet. So the, the rings particles spiral towards the planet, uh, which uh, when particles in the rings absorb sunlight, they uh, re radiate the energy again and and to and uh, if they are to remain in thermal equilibrium, the original light uh, was emitted from the sun uh, in in stroboscopically, but in, in the sun's rest frame and uh, re radiated light and concentrated in the direction of motion of the particle. Since the re radiated light carries away 
momentum as well as energy, the particle slows down and it, it orbit decays. Uh, this process is, is explored in more detail in some, um, some mathematical questions. The atmospheric drag occurs, uh, so yeah, that's, uh, that's plasma drag and atmospheric drag occurs in particles or uh, uh, particles approach the outer reaches of the planet's atmosphere. So atmospheric drag occurs as particles approach the outer reaches of the planet's atmosphere. This effect quickly causes the particles to spiral down into the planet. Okay, radio spokes and uh, warping is the disk that causes the gravitational influences of the sun. And I wish I had a sun celestial body. He's so cute, but I don't have him. I don't have it. I order him if you're going to send me. Uh, I don't, uh, I really like, I don't have a sun celestial body. I wish I had him because he's so yellow. Yellow is my favorite color. And my, my two favorite colors are turquoise and yellow. I really love yellow because it makes me really happy. I love turquoise. Like, blue is like, uh, uh, turquoise is like a version of blue and yellow. I love yellow because it's so warm and happy. And also, uh, as a Merc like as a, as a person like right in, in Mercury like I stare yellow it's my favorite color and the planet's moon so uh, that was our warping if the sun of the moon if the sun or the moon are not in exactly the same plane as a ring particles in the ring are pulled out of its ring plane ring formation uh, Emmanuel Camp ooh leave it. Um, the formation of planetary rings is still not fully understood. A major problem lies in the timescales involved in maintaining rings uh, against uh, processes that tend to disperse the or destroy them. Uh, are rings long lived and uh, ultralistic phenomena? Question mark. One idea, first suggested by Pierre Simon Laplace in 1749. And Immanuel Kant in 1724, in the late 1700, argues that the rings are nebular in origin. They were found at the same time. They were formed at the formed. They were formed, formed, they formed at the same time that the planets accreted. Since most of the uh, Saturn rings are composed largely of water ice, uh, while the rings of Jupiter, Uranus, and Neptune contain primarily non-volatile substances, silicates and carbon, Saturn must have cooled more rapidly uh, before the water could escape. Uh, although this idea could uh, account to the spectacular Saturnian system, while also explaining the composition and greatly great greater sparsity of the rings of the other giant planets, it is difficult to understand how systems, those systems could be maintained for more than uh, four and a half billion years. It is also possible that ring systems arise due to the tidal forces. If moons were drawn inside of the planet's rush limit, uh, or if a comet or a meteorite ventured too close, tidal forces could uh, fracture the objects, uh, producing a new ring system. Uh, however, tidal disruption could leave uh, intact rocky fragments as large as tens of kilometers in diameter. Uh, grinding and uh, meteoric impacts would eventually break down the rim rams. Uh, but such processes are extremely slow. On the other hand, uh, loosely packed icy objects such as comets may be broken into smaller pieces by tidal disruptions as the effect of the shoemaker levy 9. The discovery, one, two more really short paragraphs and suggested reading, which means it's the end of the chapter 21. The discovery of the giant out, outermost ring of Uranus by the yeah. Hubble Space Telescope was accompanied by the discovery of another moon, MAB, M-A-B, MAB, it, it is not a uh, it is not an acronym. It's just the word. It's the name Mab. In the same orbit as the ring. It seems that when Mab uh, is hit by meteorites, material ejected from the moon uh, replenishes the giant ring, suggesting that the source uh, for this ring uh, at least has been identified. Clearly, much work remains to be done before we can claim 
and understand the complexities of planetary rings. And chapter 22 is minor bodies of the solar system. Minor bodies. Yes, it's going to be Pluto and Charon. Have them. Have them. Yes. So we all got definitely yeah, that is like a part a subject to be talked about in November. And in December when I celebrate Hanukkah. Uh, I love Hanukkah. I love November. November. I love all of all of I love all months. And I, I love all months, but I especially love Aviv. I especially love Aviv as springtime. It's my favorite time of the year. Like I love springtime because flowers are like blooming and uh, and it's happiness and I I, I like that time of that and. Uh, Nissan and uh, May. I, I love when it's warm and summer. I, I love the summer, but it gets kind of hot uh, during the summer. So springtime is my favorite time of the year. Uh, and right now springtime is commencing in the southern hemisphere of um, the universe.